Dr. Mr. Chibike Mokuku, a senior advocate of Nigeria, here with us. Thank you for coming on this morning, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Well, yes, yesterday was a big day for 38 new senior advocates of Nigeria, but the CGN equally took that opportunity and raised some issues they consider as very salient uh, by extension to our democracy. When he spoke about the judiciary not being free, uh, the question about um, financial independence for the judiciary. This is a conversation that has been on for a while. Why do you think that this has not been given the kind of attention that it deserves? Thank you very much. Like you rightly observed, the discussion has been on for quite some time. Back there in Abia State, where I come from, uh, a committee had been set up by the governor of Abia State on this issue of financial autonomy for the judiciary. And by the grace of God, I served on that committee. We made recommendations to government, submitted the report to government. Believe you me, up till this moment, nothing has been done about it. It looks to me, I, I think rightly too, that uh, there is something the executive arm of the government is hiding by not allowing the judiciary to be financially independent or autonomous. Why, it, why, why do you say hiding? Because some, some will say, well, if the judiciary make their point and lobby sufficiently, you may get these issues addressed. Because, I mean, how come the governor and the state set up a committee to that? Some people must have approached them. Certain things must have been done for that to happen. Yes. Like I said, uh, some of us who had once served on the executive of the Nigerian Bar Association, we have repeatedly made presentations of government to say, why don't you allow this arm of government that was created by the Constitution, and the Constitution said it has to be independent of the other two. Why don't you allow them to be on their own, including allowing them to uh, have their funds directly when it's uh, uh, appropriated and allocated? Like I said, it looks to me that something they are hiding. It appears to me that the executive arm of the government will always think that they will bulldoze the judicial arm into doing what they want at the executive arm of government by keeping back some of their funds so that when the chief judge or the chief judge of Nigeria approaches them for funds that are due to that arm of government, it will now be, do this for me, let me give you your money, which is not what it should be. When did this arrangement start? Which arrangement now? This arrangement of uh, starting the judiciary of... No, 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 it has always been there. The autonomy of... Uh, or the so what, what's, the, what's the Nigerian Bar Association, for instance, doing the body of SANs? What's, what's the, what are the practitioners in the judiciary doing about that? Beyond, beyond what you have in mind, there had been a judicial pronouncement on this issue. The issue was brought before the court for detailed hearing. That was had, and a judge delivered a judgment and said the judicial arm of government should be independent wholesale. They should have their money, they should talk to their money, they should use their money. But the government did not, the executive arm of government did not obey that order. Since when was this judgment? That judgment, to my mind, has been over five, six years or even more. What do we do? The judicial arm of government has no police of its own, has no talks of its own, if you use that word. Everything is dependent on the executive arm of government. What the judiciary will do is to pronounce the judgment, make an order. To that extent, that's why their power stops. But you know, there are those who also think that there's more than one way to approach this matter yes. in terms of the independence of and sanctity of the judiciary. Because when you say uh, it appears there's something they're hiding, when you approach them, they ask you to do one or two things. But some will argue, saying, look, if, in addition to this, if you also adjust the way judges are appointed, will they have that kind of control when they say, take funds here and do certain things for us? Wouldn't I guarantee a more measure, a more improvement in independence of the judiciary? Wouldn't it deepen that? Well, uh, if, if I told that line of argument, it will mean holistic amendment of the Constitution. These arms, as independent as they are, they are also interwoven. But do you consider that an important aspect, appointment of judges? 
to a large extent, if, if as it is now, recommendations are made for anybody or any group of people to be appointed to the higher bench, it will go to NGC. At the end of the day, the, it is the government that will announce it and say, NJC has approved. And if the government or governor feels, well, I'm not too comfortable, comfortable with, this. with this person. That is it. That's why I said it has to be holistic. For us to have it in the way you are saying, that means nomination, appointment, approval, dismissal, discipline of judges must be the responsibility of the judicial arm of government without the executive coming into it. But as it is now, at the end of the day, everything that has to be done with regard to the appointment of judges or judicial officers, the executive still has a role to play, which is not what it should be. In other words, you're saying that one way or another, the influence or the authority of the executive on judicial should officers have, is, uh, is, is overbearing. And it's impeding the function of the judiciary. It is impeding judicial. the function of the judicial arm of government. If that arm of government should be as independent as the makers and the framers of the law had in mind, Everything about judiciary should be handled by the judiciary. Once the legislative arm appropriates funds for each uh, uh, fiscal year, what is due to the judicial arm of government should be given to them. Yeah. They will determine how to use it. But in so that case, we can now say we are independent. A situation where the CJN or the CJ of the state will move to the governor or to the president and say, Your Excellency, we need this. We need cars for judges. We need a com comfortable accommodation for judges. And for you to do this, we don't have money as judicial arm of government. It's still the government that will mm. provide. Do you, you see that be a limit to what the judicial arm of government will do in that? Do government. you agree with those who think that recent developments in the judiciary, within, regarding the judiciary, it raises questions about allowing all of those things to be within the judiciary? When they talk about questions about them being investigated for corruption allegations. Some may think if you leave it all to the judiciary, they will always protect themselves. No, no, no. We have an internal mechanism for the discipline of judicial officers. Which one is that, LPDC? Sorry? Which one of them? NJC has the power to investigate her own. NJC has the power to discipline her yeah, own. But, but when, NJC when is NJC... still judiciary. That is what I'm saying. We, what, what, what do they mean by protecting our own? If a judge is corrupt and a report is made to the appropriate authority that this judge is known to be corrupt, there will be investigation. It will not be one judge. It will not just one member of NJC. It will be a panel that will look into. The question is, do you have enough evidence to present to NJC for such a judicial officer to be disciplined? It doesn't start and end with picking your piece of paper and writing anything which you cannot substantiate. Once it is substantiated, of course that person will be disciplined. It doesn't matter if it's coming from the executive. What I'm saying is that the judicial arm of government is equipped enough with men and material to be able to discipline their own. I know that you've also spoken about, I mean, the judiciary, they've also spoken about uh, judicial reforms. Yes. Again, for decades. Uh, for decades, for yes, a long for, time. For many, many you, years. You've been talking about you need judicial reforms. This is supposed to be within the judiciary themselves. Yes. Why hasn't that happened? If you don't have funds to do that, what will you do? You can make suggestions. What should be done? If you don't have the resources to do them, what will you do? If you still have to go to the executive of our government to ask for funds to implement the reforms, what have you done? It's still the same problem we are wanting to run away from. <clears throat> what this is suggesting uh, is that the Nigerian is at the mercy of no one, is helpless. Because, I mean, if we say that the judiciary is the last hope of the common man, and the last hope of the common man is helpless, then that means there is no justice. Is that what you're saying? That would be, that would be an oversweeping statement. It would be an oversweeping statement in the sense that there are things the judicial arm of government, there are things they do not relying on the executive, and they do it in the interest of the common man. But generally speaking, the judicial of government still remains the last hope of the common man. They are still doing everything to execute the functions assigned to them under the Constitution, despite the restrictions. So I still believe the judicial of government 
is still the last hope of the common man, but a lot could still be done. But the, I, okay, go ahead. one of the issues that, you know, perhaps for the same reason that you are adducing, is that of the more than one and uh, 16,000 cases that are pending in federal high courts all over the, all over the nation. And uh, how, how do we begin to even address that? Yes, talking about the number of cases pending at the Supreme Court, as the CJN made us understand yesterday. And uh, he tried to explain the difficulties they're encountering. But in my own opinion, <clears throat> I think that's something the Supreme Court itself should do. I, I, I'm not a justice of the Supreme Court, but I have appeared before them. I notice some, the, the system they operate, which in my own opinion, with all due respect, could still be modernized. A situation where on a particular day, a good day like this on a Tuesday, you will get to the Supreme Court, there are seven, eight cases on the list. The first team of justices will appear, five of them in number. They will take case number one. And then the presiding justice will say, gentlemen, we will reconvene and change the panel. They will go back, two out of the five will drop, another two will come in. They will take cases numbers three, four, and three, four, and five. They will also adjourn, and they'll come back I reconstitute. I do not think, in my own opinion, that is necessary. There are three court halls in the Supreme Court. There are 15 justices of the Supreme Court. I would have suggested, if I had means of passing this on to them, I would have suggested a situation where the three courts will be sitting at the same time. Somebody is afraid of court one reaching a decision that will be at variance with what court two has said on the same issue. I do not agree. I think the three courts can sit simultaneously. When it comes to taking a decision on each of the matters had by the three courts, there will be a conference of all the 15 judges. Gentlemen, we were in court one. We, did, we, we, we heard these matters. These were the issues involved. How do we go? The 15 judges or 15 justices will be allowed to contribute their own idea on the position of the law on each of those cases. At the end of the day, they will take a decision on what the position of the law should be with regard to that particular issue of law. And then each panel will go back and deliver their judgment on the day the matter is fixed for judgment. That will help in fastening the process. That will help in tackling the number of cases that are still pending in the Supreme Court. Have you suggested this to any of the officials there? Well, personally, at the national level, I have not. But I know at my local branch of the Bayataba, I had made that suggestion. Was that it implemented? It was not implemented. That is where I also think they, they, we are part of the problem. A situation where this suggestion is taken and uh, uh, bigger heads will look into it, tinker it, and come out with what one might consider the best situation in, in, in that regard. The CGN also spoke about the conduct of you know, uh, lawyers, where he says that, quote, he stated severally, the lawyers should desist from the practice of filing needless appeals at the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court. He says, look, the Supreme Court will henceforth be unsparing in punishing those who continue to abuse court processes. And you'd have thought, when you say they're part of the problem, why do they have to keep doing this? <sighs> I, I, I was in the Supreme Court yesterday. I heard what he said. And from my vintage position, I, I didn't agree with him, with all due respect. Why? What do you mean by unnecessary? I don't dispute the fact that certain, certain appeals may not be necessary. But remember that you're representing somebody. The case that you, you are handling in court is not yours in most cases. You are representing a client. And a judge at the high court level gives his or her own opinion on an issue of law at the interlocutory stage. And that issue, that stand that judge has taken, may ultimately affect the case at the end of the day. And if it, that issue is not corrected at that stage, it might affect what you would consider judgment or justice in the matter. Therefore, it is necessary at that stage to invite the Court of Appeal to call the lower court to order. 
by reversing whatever that judge has done. But there have also been cases where we hear lawyers argue that, uh, look, they even referenced, I think, ACJ, where they say, yes, the lawyer, you're not bound to accept all of those cases. There are some cases that clearly cannot proceed beyond whatever written or judgment had, has been given at whatever stage. But lawyers still advise their clients to proceed even when the door is closed. There are also situations where the doors may appear closed. But if you go to the superior courts, the doors may open. So what do we do with the CJN's comments regarding this? Like I said, with all due respect to the CJN, I didn't agree with him. If there is anything, we will appoint more judges, appoint more judges, build more court halls to tackle these issues, to say, stop him, stop that lawyer from coming to the court. At what point do you determine that that matter is frivolous and, and should not come to the Court of Appeal or to the Supreme Court. And you know, when they were also doing uh, the ministerial screening, I think Mr. Francis Guillermo, SAN, also referenced the fact that there are certain cases that shouldn't be getting to the Supreme Court. And that if he, at the point, if he were in that position to do something about it, he will do something about it. Do you need funds as well? I know you re made reference to without funds, there can be no reforms mm. or as much reforms as you want. Do you need funds to ensure that cases don't go from customary court up until Supreme Court? I didn't also agree with my learned brother, Sir Kiyam, when he said so. We said the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. And a man feels strongly about an issue that somebody has wronged him. And the Constitution has given him a right to say, if anybody has wronged you, you have a place to complain. And that place is the court. And you go to the first court, and the judge does not agree with you. And yourself, you still believe that you have a right. You are you're also entitled to go to a higher court till the end. Yeah, but there must be an end to litigation. Yeah, when you get to, the, get to Supreme when Court, you get to customary the court, court. It depends on the issue. Most cases that are the customary court, like land matters, that may be the only loan of my family. And you want to take it away from me because you are richer or because you're more connected? I said, no. But some of them too are family matters. They are family matters. And they get to Supreme Court. Yes. Why will they not get to the Supreme Court? It's an issue I believe in very strongly. And you want to take it away from me because you're more powerful. Don't you Allow think that... me to get to the Supreme Court. The answer to that thing is the issue of what I said. Yesterday, we... Uh, were present when 38 senior advocates of Nigeria were sworn in. If you listen to uh, one of the officers who spoke, 100 something applied, and only 38 were taken. Mm -hmm. If you look at when lawyers are called to the bar, over how many thousands are sworn in every year as lawyers? Why is it that only 15 people are justices of the Supreme Court to handle matters that were brought by 1,000 or uh, over 1,000, 5,000 persons who are sworn in as lawyers. My own opinion is that this country is rich enough to have more judges who are serving. This country is rich enough to have more courts where these judges will serve. The only thing is that the executive arm of government is keeping away what is due to the people. Right. Well, Chief, why do you prefer appointing more judges or justices of the Supreme Court, building more courts, uh, rather than ensuring that certain cases don't go beyond a certain level? Because, look, no matter the cases, when they get to Supreme Court and then it's decided upon, somebody will still not be happy. Yes, somebody will still not be happy. But the circumstance and the law will force the person to be happy. Why I think and why I believe, not just at the Supreme Court level, I'm talking about all the strata of the judiciary. If you build more court halls, there are very qualified lawyers who are prepared and willing to serve as judges, both at the high court level, the court of appeal level, and up to the Supreme Court. There is no way, like I said before we went on break, a a small community like Aba, where I come from, there are only five judges, and population of Aba is over 2,000. How do you expect that only five persons will determine issues arising in Aba in one year? 
there will be oh, there are over 1,000 cases in Aba in one year. How can that be done? So about which should we go with first? Should we just go ahead and see how we can increase that number or strengthen the process to ensure that more judicial officers go through a stringent process that the public believes in? Yes. I, 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 I didn't say that anybody who raises his or her hand to be appointed a judge, such a person should be appointed. I said qualified persons. When I'm talking about qualification, I'm talking about learning and character. There are people like that who are willing and also interested. But it, it, it has now creeped into it. People now lobby for these offices. Whereas in those days, people stay in the comfort of their offices and they are invited to come and serve. Today, you are now asked to apply. That's not what it should be. So if we have enough court halls, there are people who are willing, and if they are invited to come and serve, they will. Some will be at the Court of Appeal, and some will be at the Supreme Court. That is the way, in my own opinion, if it's judicial is properly funded, that is the way to decongest the courts. I can't continue taking this argument from the executive arm of government that there are no funds. What about those they recovered from Banana Island? What are they doing with them? A particular head of state here, up to now, we're still getting part of the loot. What are we doing with them? These ones that appear to have been lost, but we have now found them. We have now recovered them. A robust executive will now say, to show that this money belonged to us as Nigerians. One person or a group of people took this money away. Thank God we have recovered them. Let us now face the judiciary and their problems. Ask the local, right. the, the we... state CJs. Tell us how many court halls you require. Tell us how many persons you want as judges. When that is done, these cases will get away from our list. All right. Uh, that's the point where we just wrap it up. We've been speaking with uh, Chief Chibike Wonkiku, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you for coming on this morning, sir. Thank you very much.